Greetings. Let's take a look at this definite integral x times the square root of 1 plus x squared. And we're going to integrate from 0 to 1. First thing we're going to have to do is find the antiderivative. We're going to go ahead and let u equal the discriminant right here. And then take the derivative of that. We get 2x dx. Notice we have a 2 here that we can connect with the dx, but we don't have the 2. We can use an integration factor here. We can put the 2 in here, but then on the outside we're going to multiply by 1 half. This gives us the dx and the 2x that we can replace with du. The discriminant that we have here uh, will become u, so we can rewrite this like this. Um, this still is not maybe the best form for everybody. We're going to rewrite this so that it's in an exponent form. Now that we have this in exponent form, it may help us uh, as we try to visualize and think through what the antiderivative is going to be. If I add 1 to this, we get 3 halves. And then I need to multiply that 3 halves by something to give me 1 here. So that's going to be 2 thirds. We're going to evaluate that from 0 to 1. So this is the antiderivative that we're going to use. But it's not quite done yet because this is in u form. Uh, we're going to have to substitute this back in for u. One other thing that you could do is that you can pull this two-thirds out and multiply it by the one-half. That's going to be a nice simplification that's going to give us a third on the outside. And we can go ahead and substitute in our values here. Sometimes I get a little excited when I see the zero here because I think, oh, well, this thing's going to disappear. That doesn't always disappear. In this case, it doesn't. We have zero squared, which is just zero, but then we're going to add that to one and get one here. We still have this one third on the outside that we'll deal with at the end. Here we have one plus one, so that's going to be two. So we want to take two to the three halves power. And then over here, we're going to have 1 to the 3 halves power, which is just 1. This number here is going to end up being irrational. Uh, so this is probably a good place to end this problem so that we don't get anything too messy. I don't want to have a bunch of decimal dribble out here. Um, so this is probably a pretty nice way to end the problem. We have a value here. This is going to be irrational. If you rewrite this with a root form, we're looking at the square root of two to the third power minus one and then all of that's multiplied by a third. We could rewrite this as 2 root 2. Uh, 
Um, that's another form that we could put this in. So I guess it really depends on what you want your answer to look like, what makes the most sense to you. All of these are algebraically equivalent to each other. And then, of course, we can distribute the third. That would be another form for the answer. Perhaps some of you would like that better. So perhaps one last form. We could do 2 root 2 over 3 minus a third. Right. Uh, if you are doing this kind of problem in a textbook and you go to the answer key, sometimes you get one of these forms in the answer key, but your answer looked like one of the other forms. So at that point, if you're really checking yourself and you care about your work, you want to verify that the solution that they give in the answer key is a form of the answer that you gave. So do the algebra and check that out. Don't just erase your work and write down what was in the answer key. You're not going to have the depth of understanding that you could have if you work through that. Hopefully you found this interesting. Share some calculus with somebody close to you. Cheerful calculations.